Just a brief note before we get started. Five Spice offers nine different analyses. We're only going to talk about the three basic ones in this video. Welcome to Five Spice, a program for simulating analog circuits. In this video, I'll go through working with DC bias, AC analysis, and transient analysis. In Five Spice, an analysis specifies simulation settings and a graph or table to display the results. And note in this discussion when I say Spice, I'm referring to Spice programs in general, and Five Spice refers to Five Spice. So let's get started. First, we need to find where analyses are described. So we come up here and select Analyze, and then select and Edit. And the Analysis dialog opens. This contains the settings for each analysis and for the graphs and tables. This block here is the Select Analysis block. This is where we would define new analyses, well, define any analyses, add new ones, select the current analysis, and delete any that we don't want. Let's start with DC bias, which is already selected. DC bias causes SPICE to compute the circuit's DC operating point, giving us the node voltages. With any new circuit, I recommend running DC bias first because SPICE finds most circuit errors during DC bias. If you run AC or transient analysis first, it shows the same errors, but it's easy to be confused and not realize their DC bias errors. So we don't really need to set up anything to run DC bias. We just drop down here to the Apply Changes and Run button, and it ran the simulation. And now we can place the mouse over the wire, and we can see we have a node voltage showing there. So let's go up and take another look at things here for DC bias. <clears throat> what would we have done if the simulation had failed? Well, it usually means you have a wiring error or a connection error in the uh, schematic. But some circuits are more difficult to converge, so we have the help convergence boxes here. And you can check the operating point box to help out DC bias. That will help some circuits converge. So we need, didn't need to do that. The other thing we can do is, let's look over here, we can either sweep, we can get DC bias by, with a sweep of temperature or with sweeping a component value. So to demonstrate this, let's try sweeping the temperature. So we could say we can go from 25 to 50 degrees C in one step, select sweep, and now come down to apply and run again. And this time the node voltages are going to show in a table because we have two of them for each node. We have the 25C values and the 50C values. And if we come back to the main schematic, we can see if we place this here, it says multiple values to remind us. So let's continue now with AC and transient analysis. We come back up here and bring up the analysis dialog again. And before we get into either of them, let's talk about an important difference between the two. AC analysis is what's called a small signal analysis. So SPICE will take your circuit with transistors, diodes, and whatever, and it will linearize it. It will substitute linear equivalents for all the nonlinear devices. And that means if your op amp has 15 volt power supplies, well, you can now put a thousand volts into the input of that op amp, and it will work just fine. Or you can put one microvolt into it, and it will work just fine. So there won't be distortion due to hitting up against power supplies or due to large nonlinearities. Transient analysis is called a large signal analysis because it does respect the power supply limits and any large signal distortion. So it's good to keep that distinction in mind. So now let's start with AC analysis. So we select that here. And for AC analysis, we need to decide what frequency range we're going to run it over. So let's say we have 1 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. 
Usually we use a log frequency scale for AC. And generally, for a simple graph, we might say 10 steps per decade. So that sets up the simulation. Now we need to take a look at what we're doing here for the graph and table. Right now, on the vertical axes and the horizontal axes, we've got auto scaling turned on, so we don't need to worry about scaling the graph. And what we do need to worry about is setting up the plots. These are the things we'll be seeing in the graph. So if we come here to this selection box, we can see this TPV1. Let me show you if we bounce back to the schematic for just a second. TPV1 is what Spice calls, Five Spice calls a test point. You wire these into your circuit at the points you want to put in graphs and tables. So coming back up here, we would select TPV1. These, these others are equations which have to do with this and we'll talk about them in a different video. So we've selected TP, the test point. We put it on the left vertical axis. Here's the setup for left vertical axis. We're displaying magnitude, which is common, probably what you want. But notice this is AC, which uses complex math. So we could display the real part of the signal, the imaginary part of the signal, the magnitude, or the phase, or the group delay. And we're going to display the magnitude in dB, which is also pretty conventional. So magnitude and dB are pre-filled in for AC analysis. So now let's say we want to do the phase. What we do is we set up a separate plot with the same test point. And we put this over on the right axis, this one, because we're going to scale it from 180 to minus 180 degrees. Notice this is pre-filled in for phase, but you have the same selection as before. So now the graph is ready to rock and roll. You could add a, a title and things like that. So we hit this. And here's our graph. Not terribly interesting, but uh, we can see here's test point TPV1 on the left, which is the magnitude, and on the right, which is the phase. And these are uh, cursors, which are connected to readouts over here. If you want the cursors on the upper trace, you click here. If you want to go to the other trace, you click there. Now let's go back and look at transient analysis. So we come back here and we select transient analysis. Now transient analysis produces a waveform over time. So we need to decide what time we're going to do here. So let's say we put 50 microseconds in. Oops, 50 microseconds. And uh, that we're going to let SPICE select the time step. Not always the best idea, but it works. And leave this set at fine. And here we have integration methods. And for the purpose of this video, you should really leave it set at the default. Um, Five Spice has instructions on making these other selections in the help. And we'll come back and talk about these other options in a bit. So let's go to the graph and table. Again, we have auto scaling selected. Here for graph style, it says conventional and XY graphs. I'm using the professional edition of the program, and it has the option of producing an XY graph where you're plotting one voltage versus another voltage, both voltages uh, coming from the simulation over time. But uh, the conventional style is what's available in the demo and the standard edition of the program, and that's what we're doing here. So again, we have to do the plots. And again, we're going to select test point V1. We're going to stick it on the left axis. We don't need to scale the axis because we've got auto scaling going on. We could add legends and titles, but we won't. And we will run the simulation. And we can see the sine wave. So let's go back again and look at some of the options that we might be involved in here in the analysis if things hadn't worked. 
basically if you get an, an error in trying to run transient simulation there can be quite a few different issues going on <clears throat> and many SPICE programs have a whole bunch of parameters that you can adjust and not much guidance on how to set them. In 5SPICE we've tried to take all of these various parameters and combine them into some specific checkboxes that do what you want. So basically if things are not running you can check, check the try harder with looser tolerance box. And this is basically a summation of what some of the best spice books have recommended. And that's what most people would use. Now if you're doing switch mode power supply circuits whether it's and you want to get a very fast but not terribly accurate simulation and often that's what you want originally you want to get it going and simulation is slow you can check this box and then a little warning is going to come up here and basically that's instructions on how to set up the rest of the simulation to go along with this option for switch mode power supply circuits uh, and it's not just switch mode power supplies it would be any type of switch mode driven circuitry and then we have a box where if you're using initial conditions in your circuit, that is uh, visual schematic symbols that force initial voltages at certain nodes, you would enable them by clicking here and you would disable them by clicking there. So there is one issue I skipped over before. Let's uh, drop out of here. So we have this sine wave. Where did that come from? Going back to the schematic this is what we call signal source in 5 spice and it acts pretty much like a function generator so if we double click that to edit it we can see that we have a variety of waveforms that it can put out in transient this is transient analysis you can see there's other tabs for the other types of analysis in transient analysis we have a variety of waveforms it can put out so right now it's set for a 50 kilohertz sine wave and that's uh, what we were seeing in the graph but you know you can change it um, you can even have a step at time zero which can be pretty useful for certain things so that's what I wanted to show you thanks for watching